Today we're testing the Jackapier battery. This is a server rack lithium iron phosphate. It's rated for 48 volts or a 51.2 volt nominal because of its chemistry. And it can store 100 amp hours or 5.12 kilowatt hours of energy. And a lot of people want these right now, but they're very hard to come by because they keep selling out. And currently the EG4 by Signature Solar has the best build quality for the price. But this one is slightly cheaper because you get all of the functionality or the features of the Pro model EG4, but it's the same cost as a budget model EG4. So I'm thinking this might actually be pretty popular and I've tested this one more than any other server rack battery on the market. I've had these for about five months. These are the ones I had in the background of my older videos that I had a blanket covering them because they didn't have inventory and they didn't even have a website. And the company that makes Jackapier battery makes other very popular batteries that you guys know of but I'm not allowed to tell you. They said that I can't tell you but yeah they make other high quality batteries that you guys already like. So today we're going to rip it apart and I'm going to show you my capacity test results. The first models that they sent out did not pass my capacity test. The BMS parameters, the high voltage and low voltage disconnect, were too conservative and so I could only pull 95 amp hours from those packs. But now it pulls exactly 100 to 101 amp hours. And like I said in my previous server rack videos, it's very typical for them to pull exactly what they're rated for. Typically with the smaller packs and individual cells, we'll pull three to 6% higher. But no matter what quality of cells, whether it's a cattle or whether it's a lichen or whatever, these for some reason pull exactly what they're rated for. And typically I test my batteries with the CBA4 and amplifier system, but I destroyed it with a high voltage. So I need to repair this. So instead I built my own battery capacity test station for large 48 volt batteries. This thing, the LV5048 can pull 5,000 watts from these batteries. And then I simply added a shunt and two watt gauge wire. So now I can test these batteries at 0.2C. And that's how I'm getting the 100 to 101 amp hours. And even on the prototype model that did not pull full capacity, I cycled that more than any other server rack battery I've ever had. And I never had a single issue and I'm still cycling it right now. And I actually have three of these batteries, so I know them very well. And it has the same communication protocol as the EG4 and all of the other server rack batteries. All of them are using the same BMS and it's a good BMS. All of them come with a pre-charge resistor and every server rack battery that I've tested comes with its own overcurrent protection device. So these are plug and play now. You just need two cables to connect it to your system and that's it. What I do like about this battery more than the EG4 is you have two terminals. So if you're trying to put these in parallel, it's a lot easier to do. On the EG4, there's only a single terminal. So these are just more organized. Also, the external dimensions are quite different than the EG4. This battery is taller, but it doesn't extend as far back as the EG4 does. The EG4 is more flat and longer, but they're pretty much the same weight. They have the same BMS, but they have different cells. So let's open it up and I'll show you. And check out this build quality. It's pretty good for the price. I mean, it's not as beautiful as the EG4 with how they route the cables and how the cells are situated. Like see how we have the cell sticking out right here? It's not pretty to the eye, but the build quality is very good. Now the first concern I think people will have is that these cells are oriented on their sides. And recently I actually talked to a head engineer for battery pack design, and he was saying that the new cells that they sell in these packs, you you can have them in any orientation that you like except for upside down. So for this one, see how the terminals are facing up? You would never have this as the bottom of your battery. So you can actually orient this in any way that you want and it will be safe to use with these cells. And if you have it sticking straight up and you have the terminals on the top, which I know people are gonna do, the cells are sticking up. So this is great for like an RV or a van where you wanna slide this into a small closet because you are constrained on space. The cell orientation issues that we had in the past, those were for older cells. Um, it doesn't apply to the newer cells, especially like Cattail or Eve cells. And the engineer I talked to builds packs of all sizes and he's built with pretty much every brand of lithium iron phosphate. So I trust his opinion and other batteries are coming out with the same configuration. So I think it's just fine. 
Now let's look at these cables and the BMS. So over here we have the balance leads and each balance lead connection has its own temperature sensor on the far right. And these are labeled. So we have one, two, three, and four. And typically all of these server rack batteries have four temperature sensor for low and high temperature protection features. And the main supply conductors for the BMS and the main terminal and overcurrent protection device is six gauge 200C rated insulation wire which is pretty standard and it can handle 100 amps just fine. And over here we have the parallel bank of FETs and we have a heat sink on top. Oh, I just noticed there's more FETs on the top and this heat sink is touching the case. So it's not just these FETs down here. And there's a large inductor right here and I finally figured out what these are for. This BMS actually has current regulation. And how I found out is I connected one of these batteries that was deeply discharged to my large battery bank when it was fully charged. And this BMS reduced the current to 10 amps until they were at the same state of charge. And then it opened up and then it jumped to like 70 amps and then it held it there until they were completely balanced. But that's pretty sufficient sophisticated if you have too much current this will actually regulate it so that's pretty new a lot of the older batteries did not have that also this has a pre-charge resistor and it's tucked up under here on the top and I cannot for the life of me get a camera in there unless I took it all apart but it's in there, there's a ceramic resistor. And this resistor is for pre-charging capacitors on large loads, specifically inverters, so it doesn't damage the FETs. If too much current flows through here, um, especially with the low resistance of lithium iron phosphate, you can damage the BMS. But um, this has a pre-charge resistor and current regulation um, and an overcurrent protection device and all of them come like this. So it is plug and play now. You don't have to add anything. You connect this directly to an inverter and you're done. And these cells are rated for 4,000 charge cycles from 0 to 100%, which is, I believe, 10 years or something like that. The service life of these is rated upwards of 20 years, but these should last past that point. Um, even if they're heavily degraded, you can still safely cycle these batteries. And it's hard to see, but we have 16 100 amp hour cells in series. And here are the balance leads, and every cell has its own cover. So overall, a very good build design. If they got rid of these zip ties and they added a plastic cover on the top, it would look just as good as an EG4 in my opinion. Opinion. It's just not as pretty as the EG4, but for the price, you're saving a few hundred dollars. So yeah, this is good. And trust me when I say this, there are more competitors in this space coming to the market. This is just one of many server rack batteries that I'm testing right now. Um, I think this one and the EG4 are going to sell like crazy for a long time. The other server rack batteries that I'm testing are over 200 pounds. So I think that this one and the EG4 are the most manageable and easy to organize and move around. And for the cost, they have all of the stuff that you need. So yeah, these are a great buy. These in the EG4 are fantastic. And I haven't had a single issue with any of these. Even the prototype model still works fantastically to this day. So yeah, I think these are fantastic. And these cells are nice and flat. That's also something I'm looking at. All of the server rack batteries I've tested have all had high quality cells. I haven't seen any grade B cells like in my other videos with cheap cells that I buy from AliExpress. It's crazy how much they're selling these considering the parts they use and the cells. If you compare these to the price and build quality of other batteries on the market or on Amazon, these are by far superior. I mean, the bang for your buck is out of this world now. I mean, even current regulation on a BMS, like that is crazy. And that's pretty much it for this video. I can't think of anything else to talk about. It's a very simple box with some cells and a high quality BMS, and that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section below. There will be a link for this one and the EG4 batteries, whichever one that you prefer. So thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.